Well, the cams aren't broken. This one? I like to break all the time for some reason. Tyler hasn't had his way with this one yet. Let's see the wear on the bearing. Now let's get this one out. Okay, so after we take this bracket, it looks like this here. Take it off of here, one, two, three bolts. Undo this, loosen this, and then all three will come off. We'll take this one off up here, so it's opposite here, so it's three bolts. You undo this, back this off, one, two, three, and those bolts come off. Take the hose from here to here off, take the upper the hose going up to the uh, bypass tube there at the top. And it's pretty much, and then the bracket between your alternator and, and uh, pan here, and then we can start focusing on this. After removing all the oil pan bolts, you can remove the lower oil pan without damaging it by putting a bar to lift the one side up so you can slide your X-Acto knife in and to cut the silicone all the way around. off the bolts you hear cracking once or twice on each bolt so that you can remove the bottom girdle without stressing the main caps. Make sure to do this in the proper sequence in the reverse. Get the connecting rod apart and the new bearings in. Ensure there is no assembly lube or oil on any bearing surface. We can place the plastic gauge on the crank journal at this time. Then install the bearing cap back on and torque down the spec. Which in this case is 18 and a half to 20 and a half newton meters or 14 to 15 foot pounds. This is followed by a 90 to 95 degree angle torque to complete the torque sequence. Next, remove the connecting rod cap and measure the plastic gauge. After this is complete, you will have to make sure that you remove any plastic gauge from the crank and bearing surfaces before reinstalling the connecting rod cap for the last time. As you see here, our measurement is 15 thou, which is exactly what we're looking for. on the bearing. Now let's get this one out. Screwdriver, put it on the non-lock side there, spin it around. <clears throat> Keep in mind 
This is the easier one to do. The very front of the engine with the crankshaft and everything else is the hardest. So be patient, be careful. I can't stress being careful enough. That end is really hard to get out. So this isn't that bad, so we'll go ahead, we'll oil this up. The biggest thing here is to make sure that this side's dry so you have no oil under the bearing because then it will, it will, could cause a spin of the bearing once we get this in place. Next we can replace the thrust bearings on the number three main cap assembly. Cover this with oil. And bring it in. These are different obviously so this one is this one's grooved uh, to fit in there so yeah make sure make sure you put that back in or you'll find out real quick that they don't these are slightly over so it won't fit in the top and just make sure that you have no oil on the back side of this bearing very careful not to drop it as well and we'll just slide it back in It will get to a point where it starts binding up a little bit, but you want to use the soft method to get it in there. I'm using the butt end of the flathead screwdriver. Oh, that's not going to fit. Uh, you really want to be careful doing this. So this, making sure this dowel lines up on this side here, we'll start the bearing install. Oh, very nice. Turn it sideways. You wanna make sure that you clean the cap up with some Scotch Bright. Now that's all clean, we can put the new put the new bearing in. Just in case, let's see. Oops. There you go. So it's flush, and of course it's lined up with this. And this tang is going to line up with this tough one here. There's no crap in there. Quickly hit that with a rag. There you go. Oops, that fell. Oops. Okay. So put this back in. Then we can get that little girdle thing. Get out of there, silicone. Put that back in. So tap, tap, tap. Mint. Okay, so. Start screwing that back on. All right, now we're gonna go get the girdle. We're gonna put that back on and then we're gonna torque this sucker down. Set your torque wrench to 32 to 38 Newton meters 
or 24 to 28 foot-pounds. Last sequence is 90 degree to 95 degree torque, which in a pinch can be done by putting a mark on the bolt or your socket and turning it slightly over 90 degrees. However, this method is not as accurate. Hey guys. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure if you like this video, you hit that like button. Feel free to share this video and let us know how we did by leaving a comment below. If you have not already done so, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and make sure you hit the bell notification so you don't miss our next video. Because trust me, you're gonna wanna see it. I hope you're having a great day and we'll see you next Sunday. Take care guys.